Ah, good evening, traveler, and welcome to the Penumbra. Tonight's tale is... The Priestess's Fortune. My queen, I have continued my investigation into what the kites left of Milltown, and though I'd hoped that our rescue mission for Sir Angelo would be a simple affair, the mess here only raises more questions the deeper I look into it. My search for survivors has turned up nothing, and I do not merely mean no survivors. Nothing. Not a single dead body or broiled bone. Even the buildings that still stand are oddly empty. I could find no valuables to speak of, no rings or heirlooms. But if these homes were robbed, it was by the most courteous burglars I have ever seen. Everything is orderly, just burnt. And the strangeness does not end there. I haven't done much research on Milltown itself. Most of what I know can be gleaned from the town's name. They specialized in logging here. Their sawmill is one of the only buildings still standing. And though their stores are certainly full of lumber, I can't locate the part of the jungle they must have been clearing. In fact, not a single one of the surrounding trees appears to have been so much as licked by the flames, including those closest to town. Did they reinforce or protect these trees in some way? Was their primary source of wood deeper in the jungle? I admit I have no way of knowing. In the frosts, loggers are unlikely to stay in one place for very long. They attack forests with all the ardor that knights of the citadel attack monsters. And it's not uncommon to see great graveyards of tree stumps sticking from the snow. The balance this village has struck is alien to me. One last observation before I begin my efforts anew. The golden mist I mentioned earlier in my notes does not appear to be so remarkable after all. We have a name for yellow dust clouds released by prodigious tree life. Pollen. More pollen than I have ever seen, but still, pollen. Which only makes the complete disappearance of Milltown's people all the stranger. If they were hiding... Surely I could hear some of them sneeze or cough. <laughs> My companion has done so with alarming regularity, after all. No. Guan Yi, strike that from the notes. Way ahead of you, babe. Struck that so hard, it's like I didn't even wrote it. <laughs> didn't even wrote. Classic Guan Yi. Good. Uh, while you're at it, strike the entire segment about the pollen... There are forest demons in the frosts who have behaved in stranger ways. Oh, wow, baby. It's like we're on exactly the same wavelength today, you know? Because I already struck that so hard, it's like... Didn't even wrote it. Yes. Hilarious. Give me my notes. I'd like to see how well you've imitated my handwriting. <laughs> well, no queen's ever gonna guess it was me, that's for sure. You've just been scribbling? I like the sound. See? Listen. <laughs> Doesn't that just make your skin crawl? Quan <laughs> Yi. Baby. I have told you on several occasions now that we have very little time here. And do you remember what happens if I fail to find Angelo and clear my name? Oh, stop whining. Do you know how many times I've been burned at this stake? Beheadings look easy. What in Saint's name has gotten into you? <laughs> Saint's name? Listen to you, Saint's name. You even talk like them now? <laughs> stop it. <laughs> I said stop it! Isn't it funny? Oh, it wasn't. I'm sorry, babe. I don't even remember what I was laughing about. Come to think of it, you are acting strange. Even for you. Am I? Is it bad? Or even worse, is it not cute? <laughs> I should have seen it earlier at any rate. It seemed unlike you to joke about my execution. hysterical. Thank you. I am very funny. And nobody will kill me so long as we can find Sir Angelo. 
and get the queen to read these notes before Absalon finds me. And before the queen dies, preferably. What notes? Silly, those are just scribbles. Here, now they're notes. Poof! So they are. Very good notes, in fact. Well done. Now, your behavior. I assume you haven't taken anything? Oh, of course I've taken things. Pocus powder, and I have newt, and double double, and I haven't taken anything more than you usually do, I should say. Nope. Clean as a whistle, having the time of her life. I think it might be this place, you know? There's just something so magical about it, isn't there? This isn't a romantic getaway, Kuan Yi. No, no, like actually magical. If you want to use magic, you have to get good at noticing it everywhere around you, you know? And here it's just everywhere. I can't go two steps without breathing in more magic than I usually get in a whole day. Concentrated magic. We have reports that the kite may have access to some spell work. No, no, this can't be him, babe. The Soul Keeper sounds fun, but anyone could use it. That's baby's first magic, all boxed up and ready to go. But this, all around us. I don't think I could even control it. It's so strange and so old. You never taste magic like this anymore. Is it dangerous? I don't know. Isn't that exciting? (laughs) Perhaps you ought to stay seated. You look rather unsteady on your feet. How can it be dangerous when it feels so good? We still don't know who that swordsman was. Or what beast is creating this magic. We should be cautious. Come dance, babe. You never dance with me anymore. Another time. We have to... Not another time. No! Quan Yi. Fine. If you won't dance with me, I'll just dance wherever the wind takes me. (laughs) Get back here. (laughs) Oh, oh, sorry. (laughs) Kwan Yi? Kwan Yi! Oh, it's fine, baby. Don't be so uptight. I just found someone else to dance with. You what? You! That swordsman! I warned you to. I told you to get out of here. This is a fun dance position. What do you call it, handsome stranger? He has a sword to your throat. Oh, so we're skipping the pleasantries, are we? Don't come any closer. I've listened enough to know what you are, knight. And the way your friend is looking now, I could run her through a few times before she could get any magic up to stop me. (gasps) What do you want? I told you. You didn't listen. You didn't explain. You barge into my home and expect me to explain why you shouldn't have? Where are the people of Milltown? Milltown can take care of itself. Where is Sir Angelo? I... I told you to get out! Ah! (sighs) Have it your way, then. He's disappeared again. Damn it! I don't think I like this dance very much, babe. Tell Mr. Schwartzman I want to be done. It appears he's made that choice for us. He's retreated. No, he hasn't. He... what? See, he's coming right behind you. Uh, uh, You cheat. You're lucky. Let's see how long that lasts. Uh, Vanished again. After each strike, he disappears in all this damned pollen. Kwon Yi, do something. You do something. I have allergies and I'm dying. You are not. I'm dying. Unless you'd like to find out what death really feels like, you had better- Oh! I bet you think you're sharp, backing me against a wall like this. I do. You've forgotten your advantage, then. If my back is covered, your maneuvers can't surprise me any longer. (laughs) We'll see about that. Kwon Yi, over here, close to me. Fine. There. Now be ready. He's sure to strike again at any second. Any second now. Damn it, where are you? Where's who? We're the only ones here. Then he's retreated. But why retreat when he had such a clear advantage? My notes. My notes. My letter to the queen. They're gone. Yeah, and about that, you write a lot of letters to this queen, don't you? If you aren't careful, it'll really give the wrong impression. My satchel's been slashed. That swordsman must have taken them when I wasn't looking. No, 
Not a swordsman. The way that thing moved into and out of the mist. That was magic. I'm sure of it. Do you think we have another witch on our hands? <gasps> I should be all the witches you need! Is that swordsman a witch? Answer the question! No! That guy? No way! If you use magic long enough, it starts to soak up all inside you, makes you a little magic yourself. That man didn't have a drop of chaos in him. All boring. You're certain of this? Duh. And yet, you said this place is filled to bursting with magical power. If he isn't magical, he can't disappear. If he can't disappear, he must have left tracks of some kind. He's very light on his feet, I'll give him that. Under normal circumstances, I don't think I would have had a chance of finding his footprints in the dirt. But with all this pollen in the air, perhaps... There! There! The pollen is more dense here, where his foot has pressed it into the ground. If we can follow these tracks, we can find where that swordsman is hiding and then make him tell us what we need to know. <laughs> On your feet, Kuan Yi, no. and stay wary. If my suspicions are correct, I think this trail may take us deep into the jungle. These foolish cards work. Mm. Tail, the thought stream isn't working. It will not even hum. I know it was my idea, but the way they glowed in Tilly's room, I merely thought. <sighs> Release me at once! Tell me what is happening here, please. I just want to see Tile. <laughs> oh, Lala? Oh, Lala, dear. I brought you something to eat. Oh, did you? And which meal is this supposed to be? Oh, Lala, you've spent a full day in there without eating a thing. And how long is the day now? Has it been 20 minutes since morning? 25? Oh, la la. Stop it. Stop it. Unless the next word you speak is the honest truth, Abbas, I shall scream and scream and scream until you're silent. I swear it. My, you've grown so much, haven't you? So bold. I... What? Eat, dear. I will tell you what I can, if you eat. If you would like to see Sister Tile, we can let you. But you must know, dear, that it comes at a price. Why? I cannot explain. The truth is that Tile understood this place better than I ever did. And I cannot do what I could not do. Could not do? I don't understand, Abbas. And you do not ever need to understand. You must remember that. But you said... You will learn the truth if you decide that is what you truly want. I am only reminding you that you have a choice now, oh la la. You can have Tile. And you can have the truth. Or you can have this garden. Your sisters. Me. But you can't have both. I wish it weren't so, but it is. Either Tile or everyone else? Will you come back? I don't know, dear. There are many things I never knew. I... I must know the truth, Abbas. And I have promised Tile that I would return the thought stream to her. And she has promised me that I would see her again alive. That is what she said. Alive! But why? It sounds as though you've made your choice. And so it shall be done. Abbas? Know always that I loved you, oh love. We all did. Abbas? Where did you... And it's suddenly so bright outside. Not nighttime at all. Little Lee, <gasps> I am here for you now. 
Meet me at the spot where I first found you. I will see you there. Tile. That was Tile's voice. The thought stream! The cards. They're glowing. Oh, universe. Please tell me. Tell me why I'm here. Mm. <gasps> skulls. Three of those strange skulls. They do not. You don't know that! You never listen to me when I tell you how I'm feeling! Your feet can't possibly hurt because you aren't using them. You've been floating for half a mile now. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Babe, I think I need to lie down. You will not. Stop it. I said stop it. I just can't. The magic in the jungle here is just so much and it's everywhere. Fine. We can rest a minute, but no longer. Why are you in such a rush? Just lie down and feel the grass, babe. It's like, it's like a million tiny exploding knives, you know, but even better than that. There's no time. I still haven't heard alarm bells from the Citadel, and therefore the kite must not have attacked the Queen yet. But any minute... Or perhaps not. Just because he's accelerated his plans for Milltown doesn't mean he's accelerated his plans for her. And he's always taken great joy in making the Queen suffer. If this is to be his final, most spiteful move, then he would wait for sundown after all. He'll milk every drop of dread he can. Are you ready to be useful yet? Oh, honey, I've never been useful a day in my life. And I'm definitely not going to start here. <laughs> so much magic. It's like we're surrounded. Surrounded? And whatever's around us is just waking up. Just waking up? Damn it, could you prophesize clearly once? When you always approach from behind, Swordsman, you remove any possibility of surprise. I only have to guard one side. Thanks for the tip. I'll keep it in mind. A bit too late for that, I'm afraid. Ugh! What is wrong with you? Try disappearing again. We both know you will the second I approach you. <laughs> oh! You... Wet pollen is terribly sticky, I'm afraid. And, conveniently for me, a darker shade from when it's dry. A little hard to hide in these clouds when your clothes are collecting them, isn't it? Damn it. That won't work anymore. Your technique is some of the best I've ever seen, swordsman. Unpredictable, but very efficient when necessary. But technique, like strength, can never best strategy. Strategy, huh? How did you phrase it? I'll bet you think you're sharp backing me against a wall like this. Stealing my lines, are you? And not even very well. That's a tree, not a wall. It sure is. What the devil? Ah! You fool. I was going to let you live, and then you block my sword with your only arm. Damn it! My blade is stuck! What have you done to your arm? I just held up my end of the deal. Your arm? It's grown! You could say that. If you think wearing a helmet means your head's grown. You want me to believe you're just wearing all that bark? All those vines? It's a tree, man. Not a magician. I knew you couldn't be human. 
Yeah, you seem pretty sure about a lot of things you're wrong about. I've been reading your notes. What are you then? A forest demon? Some offshoot of the Haldra? All human. Sorry. So, are you gonna give up now, or... <laughs> Come on, knight. You know how this ends. My sword! Alright, that's enough. So much power! You monster! You really don't like listening, do you? Oh, if you're going to kill me, then do it. The line for that prize is long enough as is. Well, I'm not going to kill you, so I guess that means we get to chat a second, doesn't it? What are you on about? Not going to kill you now, anyway. You get to decide if I change my mind. Angelo wants to see you. Angelo? He's alive? Barely. When I told him a knight came by, he asked me to find a name, so I stole your notes. When I told him who you were, he almost killed himself trying to run out and find you. If you wanted me to come with you, why have you been attacking us? Because I've heard of you too, Captain Caroline of the Guard. I've heard you have a real taste for the blood of anything that's not human. And if some knight who doesn't know anything about how Milltown works is going to stop in here and demand an audience, I can't risk you stabbing first and asking questions later. So did I beat you to kill you? No. I beat you to make a point. You take even one step out of line, Captain, and I'll cut you in two. Okay. Fine. Glad to hear it. Leave your friend and follow me. Hurry. Nobody else can see this. This had better not be too long a walk, swordsman. It's not. You were only about a dozen yards away, actually. This is it. Our camp. Your camp? I suppose you've made neighbors out of nuts and berries, then. That's closer than you're going to like. <laughs> Someone's approaching. Hands off the blade, Captain. If one dryad's enough to spook you, you might not be ready for what comes next. <laughs> dryads. They're completely surrounding us, aren't they? One for every tree around Milltown. You've never seen one before because they're very, very good at hiding. A camp. Out of nowhere. If you tried walking through here on your own, you would have ended up about half a mile away with no memory of how you got there. The dryads are real good. Are all the people of Milltown beast worshippers, then? No worship. We're just neighborly. Neighborly? Triads are an invasive species. Parasitic familiars that infect trees, then reproduce through their seeds. They do that, yeah. By harboring so many of them, this one village could be responsible for a dryad infection throughout all four regions of the world. Probably not. Is this grunting all you have to defend yourself? I don't bother talking to people who aren't listening. You can tell from a person's tone pretty quickly whether they want to learn or whether they just want to put you in your place. For a second there, I thought you might understand that. What is that supposed to mean? Your accent's enough to tell me you're from the Frosts, and my life's enough to tell me that the Citadel won't trust you if they can smell any way you're different from what they're used to. I am the captain of the guard. So you're telling me everyone's always ready to listen? How often do they ask what your life in the Frost was like, and then stick around for your answer? How often do you have to stay silent and let some meathead who has half your experience hog the floor because if you say where you got that experience, everyone in the room will turn their back on you? Then explain to me what you mean about these dryads, and I will listen. About time. Okay, two things. First, something can only be an invasive species if it has somewhere to invade. I don't know how long the dryads have been here, but nobody in Milltown remembers a time when they weren't. And if we don't have any way of telling if the humans or the dryads are the invaders here, we don't have any right to call them invasive. Done. And second, even if the dryads spread all over the place, so what? The idea of a parasite in every tree doesn't concern you? There are tiny parasites living in our eyelashes, man. If I let myself worry about every parasite, I'd go nuts. And the dryads are harmless. They sleep for months on end, and they're like the size of my hand made of sticks and stuff. If one tried to slap you, it'd snap its own arm in two. Without someone or something to protect them, they wouldn't last long. Then, that is the arrangement you have with these spirits? You protect them? We protect each other. I find that hard to believe. You said you were going to listen. Well, they seemed terribly useful when the kite was killing you one by one. More useful than the knights. I brought people from Milltown back to this camp for weeks. It was the only place the kite couldn't get them. The only place they could be safe. We saved about a hundred people that way, so remind me. How many deaths in Milltown did the knights prevent? How many? We were coming up with a plan. 
If we'd known this camp was an option... Then you would have burned the jungle down to stop a dryad infestation. I don't even think you would have evacuated Milltown first. Of course we would have. Yeah, well... This is what I meant when I said that Milltown can take care of itself. And this is how dangerous we think our own citadel is. Everything here runs with the dryads. Tree magic for lumber, illusions to protect us, fresh soil to grow crops when you don't send enough food. The Kai was a horror show, sure. So think how scared we must be of our supposed citadel to hide these dryads even when he was here so that you wouldn't find out. A death every night is one thing. If you all decided to come in here and kill all these monsters, that'd be the death of Milltown and everyone in it. I never did any such thing. I do not command the journeymen. Your I... management, Captain. You're responsible too. Comes with a fancy title. Angelo's in that tent there. I'll wait outside. Don't rile him up too much. The dryads are barely holding him together as is. My thanks. <laughs> that sound? Dryads? <laughs> if a single one of you pests has touched him! <laughs> Damn. Are they invisible? All that rattling and I still can't see... <coughs> Angelo. Sir Caroline, it is you. Why, I knew you would come. I knew... <coughs> Hush. Have I given you water? Just there. But Sir Caroline... Drink it, you oaf. Here. Thank you. May I see your wounds? That would be difficult, I think. The majority are on my back. I will be careful. Let me help you sit up. <coughs> Good. I see your strength hasn't given out completely. Now let me see. Oh my. That many, eh? Ali wouldn't say. Then neither shall I. Angelo, you are aware that on your back, covering the wounds... The roots, you mean? I've been told they are the dryad's work to replenish me or some such, though I've rarely seen the little creatures at their business. Ale says that I have lost enough blood for two men. Two! Surely that's a record! <laughs> Let's get you down, then. I suppose bringing you back to the Citadel is not an option. Not for a few days yet. But after the Dryads replenish me some, Ali assures me I will be strong enough to run there myself! <laughs> if the Captain of the Guard has time to visit me, then I assume your news is good. Has the kite been dealt with? Not exactly. What? That is why I'm here, Sir Angelo. You're the only warrior who has faced the kite and lived to tell the tale. If we're going to defend the Queen, then I need to know what the kite can do. Oh, well that is a great relief. For a moment I was worried that you'd left Captain Absalon to organize the Queen's defense. Of course not. Uh, but if I had, why would that be a problem? I know my captain, Sir Caroline. And I know his strengths and strategies. Captain Absalon can speak the average footman's language better than anyone else, and his strategy is always in frontal assault. Gather as much manpower as possible, then send it straight on. Yet all of your wounds are on your back. I'm beginning to see what you mean. Precisely. The kite is... He is beyond anything I have ever seen. With his amulet, he can do so many terrible things. Stop your body in his tracks. Surround you with noise and nightmare. He can vanish and reappear yards away in an instant. <sighs> Captain Absalon would guard the doors with his greatest warriors. But I doubt that fiend will need doors to begin with. A dark wizard, perhaps? And if he has his eye on the Queen, do you think he's in league with the monsters? It's likely they would fear a half-human abomination as much as we fear a half-monster. I do not think so. His words... They were, they were so strange, Sir Caroline. How so? Killing monsters comes first. That is what he said to me. And yet, all this human death... I, I can't make sense of it. To search for sense in the madman is to go mad oneself, Angelo. But I do not think he was mad. No more so than you or I. Angelo. 
It is likely we won't be able to speak much longer. When the dryads approach, I find myself quite sleepy. Then it is likely time for you to rest. And do you know who they remind me of, Sir Caroline? That hound we met on the Lake of Tranquility. Oh, what was her name? Nimue. Nimue. I have not been able to make sense of her either. But I am glad we did not kill her. I am glad you stopped us. Well, a fat lot of use he was. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Never trust a man with 40 stab wounds in his back. <laughs> How's that for an entrance, babe? Caroline, hello. I eavesdrop on your whole conversation and you're not even going to yell at me? Killing monsters comes first. A seductive little tune, isn't it? Sure. But I can't see how that matters anymore. Without this big lug to vouch for you, you're still public enemy number one. So the Citadel's greatest threat is a man with the mind of a knight. And if he has the mind of a knight, and the knowledge of a knight... Babe, it doesn't matter anymore, okay? This is a no-brainer now that that Citadel is full of nasty people who want you dead, and now you've learned that even the things they want dead should just be left alone. Yay, character development! So now, we have no reason to go back there, and we can just run away like we always used to. Maybe we can try the waste again, or... No. Excuse you? No. Baby, where are you going? You stay here. But, babe! Caroline! Tile... Sister Tile! Well, Kale, we have arrived, but where is Tile? <coughs> of course, this is the right place. I recognize the grave. Maybe Tile will be here soon? This grave isn't much like the others, is it? So old, and so very tall. And there are little feet on top of it. How curious. Perhaps a statue once stood here? I do not know whose grave it is, Tail. The sisters never liked when I journeyed so far into the graveyard. And besides, I cannot read. Ow! Ow! Ow, 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 my toe! Who would hide a great big rock in all these leaves? I know it wasn't on purpose. It is most likely a... Oh! That isn't just a stone, is it? It's a... Head. No, no. A statue's head. And made of the same material as this grave. But who? No. It, it can't. The face can't. You have to say it, little leafling. Who do you see? I see myself. Then this must be my grave. And the very spot where I found you. A newborn life rolling in the soil of the dead. You had that tale even then, you know. Perhaps you've always gone to it for comfort. <gasps> Sister Tile! Oh. <laughs> oh, my leafling, I've missed you so. Sister Tile, I have come to return that which you let me borrow. Your thought stream. I have kept it safe. So you have. That was very good and brave of you, Olala. But I cannot take the thought stream from you. But why? Because it was Tile's last gift to you. She would have wanted you to keep it. Tile's last gift? Then you aren't Tile. And the abbess, Sister Bole, and all of the others, they were you too. Whatever you are. And this soil, and these graves, and all the memories they contain. I have known you for a long time, Olala. A very long time. 
My sisters are gone, aren't they? And they aren't coming back. Nothing that passes through Death's Gate may return the way it came. I am so sorry, Leafling. I miss them more than I can say. They're all gone. Forever. Because something happened. Something... Oh, Lala. I am sorry to burden you with so much so quickly, but... I am afraid there is a choice you must make. And you must make it before we continue. All gone. If you would like, I can help you forget that any of this ever happened. I can give you the memory shades of all your sisters. Or, if you wish, I can inhabit this shade for you. This one you knew in far more detail than the others. You can live here with me, or you will be safe. I promise you. You will be safe, and you will forget all of this pain you feel. But why is it one or the other? I am too old and too weak to give you both. But if you'll let me, I can help you forget Tile, or forget all your other sisters, or- Or what? Tile promised me that I would see her again. She promised she would live. She was only trying to protect you, Olala. But she lied to me. I did not ask her for this. I did not ask anyone to lie to me or protect me, but they did, and they... I don't remember what they did. And that's because you've lied to me too, isn't it? Leafling, I was only... You make me forget. You want to keep me here forever, never knowing anything. You've lied to me, and I'm finished with lies. Tell me the truth. Are you certain? Once I return your memories, there is no... Tell me. My... You've grown up so much, haven't you? What is... There is nothing more valuable Well, about time you gave up. I... <laughs> I might have gone a little overboard. Wouldn't want to kill you before I take that soul. But for this sight, to see a blasphemy like you bleeding in the dirt where you belong, I think it was worth the risk. And just think how many beasts will fall when I have you in my amulet. Just think that I... Standing outside the realm of death will hunt them for all time until the last monstrous heart stops beating. Soul Keeper, feed one last time. <coughs> Remember the man who hurt you, the kite? I finally met him, and did I die? No, but you came close, very close. I am sorry that I couldn't save you sooner, little leafling, but it was not until you were so near to my domain that I could call you back to me. Your domain? Death. You're the Garden of Graves, aren't you? I am. But how? That I do not know. You've met a being like me once, on your travels to a distant swamp. A being whose domains were life, and music, and creation. The Keep! If that's what they're calling it now, then yes. But those are not my domains. In these wastes, I preside over the soil, and memories and death. So you are the garden, and this statue, this is my grave, isn't it? It is. But then, 
if you brought me back to life, can't you bring all the sisters back too? Even if they have to be babies like I was, I could take care of all of them, and, and I, I would I wish just... I could, Olala. But I did not bring you back to life. Nothing passes back through the gates of death. Except you, my leafling. I don't understand. I can't recall a time when you weren't in my soil. For as long as I have been, you have been a part of me. For age after age, as the sisters dug graves and built their temple, I have watched, and I have protected, and I have kept their memory safe within me to be summoned when in need. But that means I have also watched them die. I have watched every sister find this place and live here, and I have loved them all. And then I have had to usher every one of them through death's gate. Except for you, Olala. You who were born from my soil, soft and wailing and new. You are the only birth this warden of death was ever allowed. And words cannot say how much I love you. But you can't bring Tile back. Only this shade of her, and at great cost. Your memories of Tile are much more detailed than the others. Taking them all into myself at once like this is fatiguing. In memory, your sister will never truly die. Life blooms fullest where other life has passed. For, for without life, nothing could die, and without death, no living thing could thrive. I know that sermon. We all said it together, but not anymore. I don't understand. I know all of this. The sisters taught me for so long to accept death, and I do not fear the day that I will die. This should not hurt, because I know... I, I know... <laughs> oh, oh, Lala. I know, that, I know they were going to die one day. I know that we all do, and it is therefore foolish to fear it. And I have trained so long, but... But then I think of how I will never see Tile with her books again, and I will never take my breakfast with my sisters again, and the abbess will never teach me how to read more than four letters, and Tile will... Tile will never... Do not torment yourself, little leafling. But doesn't that mean I have learned nothing? That my own sisters raised and fed and taught me, and in return I have not learned a thing they said, and, and now I never can. You have learned. I promise that you have. For learning to accept death and learning to say goodbye are not the same thing. I miss every sister who has ever called me home. And going on despite that feeling, I am learning that skill even now. I miss them so much. As do I, my child. As do I. I don't... It hurts so much. And it will find strange new ways to hurt as long as you live. But nothing lasts forever, Olala. Oh, not pain. Not you. And not me. So even this pain has a life of its own. Even it must be respected and understood. So it may rest in its grave in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Little leafling, I am sorry to burden you, but your time runs short. The thought stream exists to tell us where we are needed, and it has protected you against my forgetful winds many times today. I believe that means the universe wishes you to be somewhere else. The second citadel... The kite is going to kill the queen, and maybe more people, just like... just like he killed all my sisters. I would beg you not to go, but I see in your eyes that it would make no difference. And so I must ask you another favor instead. A place like myself can only live as long as its domains are tended to. Were all song to leave the swamp, your keep would wilt. And with no sister here to remember me or to remember the sisters who have passed. I will surely fade away. But I... I have to go. I can't let other people feel this way. I am not asking you to stay. 
I am saying that the only place in this world that holds the sister's memory now is you. And as I have given this land power as long as it remembered those gone, I would like to give you my power now. All of it. But what will happen to you? I think you know. Aren't you afraid? <laughs> to fear death would be to fear myself. No, I do not fear death. But I do fear what could come before it. The many years alone. A wasting away for nothing, for nobody. While my memory fades and these leaves cover my every grave. I will not force you. But if you would take my power, my memory, I could ask for nothing more. I will. Thank you, Olala. I love you. And so, to the final sister in the Garden of Graves, I give myself. Will it hurt, O oh Garden of Graves? Tile? Oh. Then... I am alone. <laughs> well, it is nearly sunset, Tail. We must hurry. Well, Tail, this is the second citadel, and with the sun so near to setting, the kite must be inside there right now. Of course I am scared, but Sir Angelo lives here, and Sir Mark, and Sir Damien and Miss Rilla, know people here, that love people here, even Miss Quan Yi does, and I don't want that kite to hurt them anymore. There is still time for you to turn back, little creature. None of those you've named will benefit from a life fully wasted. <laughs> Captain Caroline, I... You have made your intentions clear. And I have enough of an enemy to deal with at the moment without adding you to the pile. Besides, the irony is delicious, isn't it? Just think of how these northerners would squirm to know that the two who came to save them were a foreigner and a half-monster. You do not sound as though you like the people of this citadel, Captain Caroline. I don't. Then why have you come to save them? I don't much like people. Full stop. But, in all their variation, every once in a great while, one gets it right. And if I am here for anyone, I am here for them. And besides, I have a job to do. Well, are you coming? Or must I take on that kite alone? Do you think we can beat him, Captain? No, I don't. I think in all likelihood I will die here. And if you are foolish enough to come with me, you will die soon after. Well? I am coming, Captain Caroline. And thank you for telling me the truth. Enough. We must move quickly. Ready yourself, Olala. If you've enjoyed this tale, please consider donating to the Penumbra on Patreon. Our artists work tirelessly to bring you these stories, and if you have the means, we hope you will support our efforts. Every dollar helps. You can find that page at patreon.com slash the Penumbra podcast. If you support us on Patreon at the $10 level or higher, you'll receive access to commentary tracks like this one from actor Marge Dunn and co-creator Sophie Takagi Kaner. Maturity-wise, she's I'm like, thank you, I'm not a kid. I'm, you know, I'm a tween now. Yeah! <laughs> I can I'm handle it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we've all been there as kids where we're like, I just want to know where the dog went. I know they're not on a farm or something like that, right? Yes. Especially for someone like Olala who, you know, has continually 
been on her own in the middle of nowhere and people then keep finding her like they need to save her and she's like no yes. no no, i'm on my own journey um, i'm good i'm good so yeah i i think that it's a, she's kind of scared of caroline obviously because caroline sure. is very intimidating mm-hmm. did you know that the penumbra has merchandise for sale it's true the penumbra has partnered with dftba to bring you the posters shirts pins and socks your hearts desire just go to dftba.com and search for the penumbra podcast we would like to give thanks to all who support us on Patreon, but especially to Alex Figueroa, in memory of Spiral Opal, Zana, Jeanette, Valentine, Angela is peak performance and also my girlfriend, Lucy Biles, Deity Hearted, Tazatui, The High Frog Council, Michael David Smith, The Large Letters of Sir Angelo in all caps, Liz Nexus, Win Buckley Saves the Universe, 2020 can't get any weirder, so you may as well kiss a lizard. Caroline Seidman, Freya, Jay Yanuzeli, Karen ZH, Dante Smith, Red L, Kim Dauber, NB Shaper, Menchowski, Jasper James, and Jamie Gunter for their incredibly generous contributions per episode. Thank you. This tale, The Priestess's Fortune, was told by the following people. Marge Dunn as Olala, Leslie Drescher as Sir Caroline, Melissa De Jesus as Kwan Yi, and Jimily as Ale, M. Sutherland as Angelo, Sophie Takagi Kaner as Sister Tile, Allison Choate as the Abbess, and Simon Moody as the Kite. The Penumbra is created and produced by Sophie Takagi Kaner and Kevin Vibrant. If you wish to know more about our ever-expanding, infinitely creative team of artists, musicians, editors, designers, and managers, you can read about them in the show notes of this episode. I'm afraid that is our time for today, dear travelers. We hope you will join us again soon.